welcome back. So, before we get started today, I've got a bit of a question for you. What did the sea say to the land? Nothing. It just waved. <laughs> today, we are doing a sea-themed colorway. This one is called Stormy Seas. The inspiration photo of the for this is a, a massive wave coming into land. The sky's all dark. You got those dark, rich blues. This one is one of those mid immersion dyes. So we've got lots of soak in the pot. Um, that water, as you can see, is pretty much like three quarters of the way up through. And we're also going to do a highly variegated yard. So we're going to take and do the zigzags to try and make sure that we don't have a lot of patterning going on with the yarn um, rather than doing that. 33%, you know, one third, one third, one third. We're going to take and do the zigzags. So we've got kind of a bright blue in the first zigzag, the W or the M, depending on which direction you're looking. Um, for me, it's, I like to call it an M. I don't know why, but it, it, you're right. It is kind of a W in this scene. And then up beside that, we've got a darker blue. So basically what we've got in the pots is sea breeze with a little bit of charcoal to kind of darken it up. Now, the thing I run into with Seabreeze is it tends to bleed and there is nothing I can do to get it to exhaust 100%. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, just before that, you saw I put a little bit of gray in the pot. This again is to just create a little bit of variation in the blue itself. It's not necessarily in the pots to be gray. It is there to try and just darken up just a little bit of that blue to give us a, a third or a fourth tint to it. So. We have already cooked it off. Um, I, it was real quick on this one. We only cooked it for about six, seven minutes on the one side. Like I said, it is going to bleed no matter what I do. So we might as well leave all of our cooking to the very end. Um, we'll, we'll probably do a nice long cook at the end, like 15 minutes or something like that. Get it nice and steamy. So now on this side, we are basically going with the same thing. So we had two blues and a little bit of gray on the front in those zigzags. On the back, we're going to do pretty much the same thing, but we're going to spice it up a little bit. We're going to add some sprinkles because why not, right? If you can sprinkle, why wouldn't you sprinkle? So get these flipped over. You can see there's just a tiny bit of blue tinge left in the, in, in the pots. And again, there was nothing I could do to really stop that. So there's no point in cooking it for too long because... Honestly, you're you're just kind of wasting your own time at that point. So get to know your dyes. For me, this sea breeze really has, it's got a warm place in my heart and I got kind of a mean hate on for it at the same time, just because it doesn't exhaust like I would like it to. So we've got that bright blue again in the W style, zigzagging across all five skeins. And then we're gonna take and toss a little bit into what I call the triangles. So this is uh, more of a gray, kind of a mouse gray, um, we're not pushing too, too dark with the grays. I really want that C color to take and come through. I don't want to have to fight with that too much. So we've got a little bit of gray in the triangles and this gray will actually be pronounced in the final product. You'll see this gray coming through. And then for our zigzag, we're going to go with a nice dark charcoal. Now, what we're doing here again is basically just trying to darken up what we already have in the pots. We want that blue to really have some depth to it. Um, Without this, you're going to see just, you know, basically the same blues across the entire skein. So got that nice dark charcoal zigzag to kind of spice things up a little bit here. Get it mixed up. We're going to cook it off for a good, um, probably about 15 minutes on this side. Then we're going to take and add some sprinkles and then we're actually going to cook it again. So it's going to get double cooked here just to try and make sure that we set this blue to the best of our abilities. All right. Got the lid on. Let's get it cooked. No, I'm not going to make you sit through it. Because that would be horrible, right? Just watching the condensation build up on the lid. It, it might be a little satisfying, but to be honest, there's better things to do than just, you know, watching water boil. So this sprinkle here, um, generally when I'm looking at a blue sprinkle, I, I tend to lean towards the navy side of things. Um, actually, my lead dyer was like, hey, why don't, we, why don't we try teal on this one? And I was like, yes, absolutely. Why not? I've never done a teal sprinkle before. So... We threw a little bit of this teal sprinkle in here and it came out absolutely amazing. I can't wait to show you when we're doing our twisting. 
big reveal at the end, of course. But this teal really just became quite pronounced. It, it came across as being a dark, dark blue rather than just a straight up black. Um, the navy does tend to have a little bit of bleed out on it that looks blue, but these sprinkles actually look blue throughout. So you don't really have to worry about them being too, too dark. Um, nice long cook off here. Uh, again, we cooked it for about another 15 minutes to make sure that those sprinkles really set. Teal is one of those colors that um, sets quite well. So um, now you can see, you know, we spent that good long time in the pots here. We have cooked it off to the best of our abilities. There is a tiny bit of blue left over, not a ton, but still nothing you can do to really stop that from coming through. So here is our chunky weight base. It's 100% Merino, super duper soft absolutely fluffy it is like working with clouds it's a beautiful beautiful base and in our last colorway i noticed that it really picked up the colors quite well so i wanted to try it again on this uh sea sorry stormy seas colorway just to kind of see if there was much of a variation um, from what i can see without the hanks being twisted it, it kind of looks like everything just matched up nice so it doesn't matter if you're looking at our fingering weight base or dk worsted chunky it, all the colors kind of came through at the same same depth um, this here is our worsted weight it's also a hundred percent merino super wash yarn 19.5 um, micron absolutely wonderful base to work with this is my top pick of course i love working with the worsted weight when i'm when i'm doing any kind of thing with the yarn that's for sure up beside that we have our dk weight which is a 80 20 merino nylon blend it is absolutely perfect for anybody who's looking for a next to skin project but needs a little bit of extra durability if you haven't worked with our dk weight base before um why not <laughs> that's the easiest way for me to put it why not um absolutely wonderful base to work with it really is and up beside that we have our fingering weight base up next before i get into that i do want to take and say please go hit that subscribe button for me if you don't mind, drop a comment, drop a like, hit that notification bell. Make sure you never miss a video. We will be picking some more winners for our subscriber giveaway, our random subscriber giveaways. So make sure you're subscribed. Doesn't matter if you do it right now. We might be announcing your name in the next video. Who knows? So this here, fingering weight base, absolutely wonderful base to work with this is my go-to when we're talking about photos i just i love how the multiple strands really pick up the colors and it really allows me to showcase what the skein is all about so let's get all four of them into the light box here we've got our fingering weight base up beside that we've got the dk weight base you can see it does tend to have just a little bit of a lighter color to it. Not a ton. Like these are very, very close, holding them up side by side by side. The worsted weight base, I do find tends to pick up colors just like the fingering weight base. The two of them are pretty much on par. And then up beside that, we have our chunky weight base. Nine times out of 10, chunky weight tends to grab those colors and make them just the tiniest bit more vibrant. But across all four of these bases, you can see everything is very pretty, very matchy matchy and a stunning shade of blue, if I do say so myself. All right, into the swatch maker, of course. Now, looking at this spinning, I can tell you, I'm not seeing a lot of patterning going on, but those speckles look amazing, do they not? I love how they're coming through in this in this swatch. It, it really showcases, you know, that that speckling and how it's evenly spaced across the entire hank. Um, absolutely turned out perfect. I, I could not have asked for a better outcome if I do say so myself. So let's get this spread out a little bit. Look at it. These are not true colors. I know. I wish they were. Um, the lighting here where the swatch machine is, is not perfect, but we'll toss them into the light box and really you can start to see that variance. So you've got those nice dark blue speckles coming through that came from our teal, um, our, our teal shade. Um, and then look, oh yeah, absolutely. I, I'm lost for words. We got those grays coming through. We got the blues coming through. We got those nice dark speckles, absolutely saturated through the, oh, the entire Hank. I love it. I really do into the swift so we've got our umbrella swift here um, i just want to take and show if one of these strands happened to be going the wrong direction how you would be able to take and figure out if it was facing the wrong direction because that can cause some pretty good chaos when we're doing our 
our caking or our balling or whatever you want to call it. So basically, if you were to take a look at these ties, you would see there's a strand that kind of wraps around the wrong way on the tie itself. So when I am spinning these things around, taking a look just before I put them on the Swift, I want to make sure that all of my strands are in the ties correctly. Like so. Perfect. Into the Umbrella Swift, we'll get that puffed up a little bit. There are two ties on our fingering weight base here, and I always like to take and grab them by the knot. So this one here is our four strand. I don't want to start with that one. I'm going to start with this one over here. Give it a little bit of a tug, and we can see there's the knot. I always want to cut close to the knot. I don't want to just grab a random strand and cut, because you never know, right? Things, things can happen, and that's just not going to end well. This here has all four strands and I still like to take and cut the entire knot off. Um, then we just kind of grab this one here, give it a little bit of a tug and it usually pops off quite nicely, leaving us with the ends, the beginning of the hank and the end of the hank. Now pulling on this one here, it looks like it's kind of tucking down. Nope, the other one's tucking in behind. My bad. So we can see this one tucks in behind. This is the end of our hank. We don't want this one. So we're just going to kind of wrap it up here just a little bit. And then give this one a couple pulls, make sure everything's coming off nice and clean. Beautiful. All right, into the caker. I like to give myself, you know, a good three, four inches of tail when we're working in the caker. Um, I, I don't like too much because then it's kind of spinning around on the top. Um, so just that, you know, a couple inches to make sure that we're, we're in here nice and secure. And it can kind of dangle down into the center of the cake. So give that a little bit of a spin and let's get this cranked up to speed. So. This time, I thought, you know what? Let's let's do a little bit of a uh, a, a time lapse with the caker. I, I, something about just watching that cake grow on the caker is mesmerizing. At least it's very satisfying to take and watch. Um, I don't want it to take you know the full four or five minutes that it would take to take and cake this up. So we are going to do a quick little time lapse on this. But um, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing to see this thing spinning around at mock chicken, just kind of doing its thing, growing, and then you get this beautiful wonderful little creation at the end. I, I don't even know how this thing works, to be honest. Like it just comes off and it looks like magic. It's it's all twisted up, wrapped around itself, all pretty. It, it is a wonderful little machine. Um, looks like we got a little bit of red fuzz on this one. I will get that picked off, but um, into the light box, of course. So giving this a spin around, what we're looking for in a cake is basically saturation throughout the entire hank. So we're seeing lots of lots of blues. I'm not seeing a super dark center or a super duper light outside. Everything seems pretty uniform across the entire cake. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Everything's mixed up exactly like we would hope it to be. And the colors are true to a skein beside it. So fingering weight base in the caker. Absolutely beautiful. I love it so much. It's time to move on to my favorite part of these videos, which is the pairings. So up first we have Stormy Seas, of course, beautiful blues. And then up beside that, we are going to take and throw in Blessed Bluebird, which is another highly variegated yarn. Um, this one just kind of leans a little bit more towards the gray side of things. And it's got that little touch of chestnut in it, um, which is a wonderful addition, especially seeing that one knit up. Up beside that, we have Starlight Star Bright, which is a little bit of a lighter blue. And then up beside that, we have uh, actually one of my older colorways. This one is called Rogue Seas. So this one's got that same blue base to it, but it's really taken pushing into the, into the chestnut side of things. So a beautiful, beautiful colorway, of course. And then up beside that one is another highly variegated yarn. This one is called Rambling River Rock. And I am absolutely in love with this colorway. I, I'm not even going to be modest about it. This is a... Stunning, stunning colorway. I I love it. I, between Rambling River Rock and Driftwood, probably one of my top twos when it comes to the highly variegated yarns. And then up beside that one, we are going to throw Flowing Fields, which just basically pushes over into the browns, golden yellows, and, you know, those rich, rich, rusty browns. You know what I mean? So... Looking at this, I, I, there's not necessarily a fade going on, but more of a fade between colors. So we're going from blue all the way over to that brown. Love it so much. On to the semi-solids. First up, of course, we've got our today's creation. 
Stormy Seas. Up beside that, we have Teal. Um, teal is very, very matchy-matchy with the sprinkles in here. Um, those two blues are absolutely bang on. And then the other shades of blue in this colorway really quite, they pair up quite nicely. Up beside that, we have Midnight, which is kind of on the darker side. Teal and Midnight, they are, they, they feel like the same blue family to me. So it's, it's kind of nice to be able to move from a lighter shade into a darker shade if you're looking for that kind of project. Um, of course, we've got the Mouse Gray. Mouse Gray and Teal pair up really, really nice. So it is a no-brainer to take and toss this one into the mix. And then of course, up beside that, let's go a little bit darker. Let's go with the charcoal, of course. So again, even looking at all four of these colors, charcoal pairs up with all of them quite nicely. It's, it's one of those versatile semi-solids that really just kind of hits with pretty much everything that you're looking for. And then if you're looking for something a little bit lighter, you could always go with our Ecru Undyed. So absolutely beautiful, whether it's paired up with one of them or all of them, it doesn't matter. The, these five really sit quite well together. If I could get the skein to sit properly, just st stay, stay, stay. Good boy. All right. Got it. Ecru Undyed, absolutely stunning. It is time to get to the big reveal here. So we've got those brilliant blues in Stormy Seas with those teal speckles, a little bit of gray to play around with, and some white. It is a beautiful colorway absolutely stunning as always swatch available on the website last photo of every single listing and before i let you go i just want to say thanks for coming along on this journey with me it was it was fun to have you here i love making these videos i'm happy you guys are enjoying them i hope you guys will stick around and watch another one with me have a great day <laughs>